recording. Yeah, so we are discussing uh, on the fundamentals of, of increase, the fundamentals of increase. And I want us to get a broader understanding of, of the word increase. When I'm talking about increase, I'm talking of uh, our lives, our spiritual lives getting to the next level. I'm talking of our families, the quality uh, of our families, the quality of our churches, the quality life of our Christianity, our spiritual work with the Lord increasing and going to another dimension. I want to submit to us that we serve a God uh, who uh, loves increase and is a God of multiplication. He is a God that is determined to take us to the next level. <clears throat> God uh, does not thrive in uh, stagnation. He is a God of the next level. The scriptures uh, exhorts us to, be, to move from one level to another level, one level of faith to another level of faith, from one level of grace to another level of grace. So it is in the plan of God for us to move to the next level and to believe him for for increase. But today I just wanted to uh, underline the fact that it is God that causes increase. And I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, a, fa a famous uh, uh, scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, here we, we find a situation that the the Corinthian church was under, uh, under the leadership of, uh, of course, Paul the Apostle, uh, under the, the teacher Apollos. And, um, and this is what we, we read, beginning from verses six. Uh, let us read from verses five, First Corinthians chapter three. The Bible says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each, uh, each one. I planted, Paul, Paul is saying, I planted, but he planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So when Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, he's reminding this church that the growth that you are experiencing is not a work of man. Because sometimes when, when people are thriving, when there is success, when there is uh, so much uh, uh, victory, it is possible to look uh, at ourselves, to look at uh, other, other sources uh, and ascribe the victory to, to the wrong places. But Paul, uh, writing to the Corinthians, he reminds them that his role was just the planting role. Apollo's role was to water, but who caused the increase? God. I know we desire for increase in, in the year 20, uh, I'm so sorry, uh, we keep getting calls here. Yeah, so, Every time we are in a situation of success, let us subscribe the success to God. And that is what God, I mean, Paul was, was reminding uh, the church that it is God that causes uh, success and, and increase. I want to uh, begin by saying that God oversees success. God controls how we succeed and God controls the increase because he is a God of uh, multiplication, and he increased the Corinthian, Corinthian church. Uh, from the verses that we read, there are three words that stand out. There is planting, there is the word watering, and there's the word increase. Planting is uh, the work of man. Watering is the work of man, but increase is the work of God. And, and these two uh, principles, the first two that, that is our responsibility, they, they form the basis of, of God increasing. God will not increase anything that has not been planted. 
God will not increase anything that has not been planted. And planting here, I mean, you commit it to the hands of God. Anything that we commit to the hands of God, God will cause it to increase. Uh, and the best example here is uh, the, the, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 uh, people that, that, that we read uh, in, in my first uh, 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 illustration of this sermon. Uh, we read about the young boy that appeared with his lunch in the meeting of, uh, of Jesus and the multitude was hungry, hunger for three days. They didn't have anything, all the food had run out, but there is one boy in the crowd that had had his lunch. Uh, uh, fishes, just a sm small, a small pack package of his lunch, some fish and some bread. What happened? This lunch was given to the disciples, the disciples passed it to Jesus, Jesus broke it because they had planted it in the hands of, of, of Jesus. Jesus broke it and he gave it to the disciples and it increased because it, it didn't go back to them in the same state. It had been blessed. It had been blessed and blessing here, I mean, it had been given the capacity to increase anything that we commit in the hands of God, whether it's our children, whether it's our ministry, whether it's a gift that we have, whether it is, uh, it is money, whether, whatever it is, anything that we commit in the hands of God, it is given back to us blessed. That's why I'm saying that planting is the, is, uh, is the responsibility of, of ours. Watering is our responsibility, but God causes the increase. So every time we succeed, let us remember that it is God that has caused that increase to take place. The Bible says that I look to the hills, I look to the mountains, where does my help come from? Then the psalmist says, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I want to say that without God, without God planting and watering, I mean, God, without God, Planting and watering is a futile effort. Uh, the Bible says, I think it's in Proverbs, that a fool laboreth himself, not knowing the entrance to the city. You can, we can wear ourselves, we can work so hard, but if we do not commit what we are doing to the hands of God, it becomes an effort in futility. Man can plant, man can water, but if it is not committed to God, it does not increase. There are people who work so hard January to December. They have great visions. They wake up early. They go to labor, but you don't see so much growth. Why? Because they have not committed it to God. They have not invited God in their space <laughs> because God wants to be invited in the space like the disciples invited God to the space of the boy who had just uh, his, his lunchbox and see what God did with it. He fed over 5,000 people because God was invited in that space. Can we invite God in our spaces this year? Can we invite God in, in our situations? And shortly I'm going to show you uh, what God did with with Abraham, we're going to look at the example of Abraham and how Abraham's situation changed when God stepped in. But before then, I want to read you another scripture uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, verses 10. 2 Corinthians, we are skipping to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 10. The Bible says, remember we are talking about the God who increases or the God of increase. And as we talk about this, let us believe God that we are going to increase. Uh, before we read that verse, this, this has just come to my mind and, and I want to say it. Um, 
uh, usually we expect that increase will only happen when the environment is favorable or like when other people are increasing, then you, we, we can also increase. But increase, increase in the eyes of God does not happen uh, that way. God uh, increased Isaac in a moment of famine, in a moment of difficulty. Uh, uh, the Bible says that Isaac sowed that year, if you read uh, Genesis 26, that Isaac sowed that year and he reaped the same year and the man became rich. He became very rich. Some translations say he became prosperous and very prosperous. He waxed rich, he smelt riches in a difficult year. I want to tell us that let us not uh, uh, look at what is happening around us. God is able to increase us even when uh, other people are, 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 are failing amidst famine, amidst pestilences, amidst difficult time, economic recess, God is able to cause us to be, our situation to be different. I wish this was a personal, uh, in-person service. I would tell you to turn to your neighbor and tell him or her that your situation is different. Your case is different. Why? Because God is in the situation. God is, when God is invited, that story is not, is not like the other person's story. It is not like stories we hear uh, in the media. No, things change because God is in the boat. When God was in the boat of the disciples, they did not sink. If it was any other boat, that boat would have sunk, but it mm -hmm. makes a difference when Jesus is in it. The biggest question we need to ask ourselves in 2022 is, is God, in our space, or we have kicked God out of out of us. <coughs> is God inside, or is is He outside? The Bible says that He stands at the door and knocks at the door of our spaces, asking to be let in. When we let Him in, He comes in. He dines with us. He changes our situation for the better. Let us invite God in our spaces in 2022. In Jesus' name. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter um, 9, verses 10, the Bible says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower, <laughs> now he introduces a completely new uh, dimension here. He says that he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So there are seeds of righteousness that um, God supplies. I will read that verse again. He says, may he who supplies seed to the sower. So God is the one who supplies the seed for us to sow. Some people say, how would I sow? Uh, from where would I sow? What, what am I sowing? Why should I sow what, that which is mine already? We have nothing that is ours. That which... That seed that, 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 that is in our hands, that lunch that is in our hands, in the first place, it belongs to, to God. So the Bible says that may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. So there are things that God gives us, they're supposed to be eaten. They are, it is called bread for food. But there's a, a category of supply that is called seed for the sower. We are not supposed to eat what is supposed to be sown. If we, if we eat the seed, there will be no supply for tomorrow because there will be, the, the God, God would have nothing to increase. So may God give us the discernment, my brothers, my sisters, that we will differentiate between what is supposed to be for food and what is supposed to be uh, for, for sowing in 2022 because it is on that breath that God will cause increase. Remember, God increases that which has been committed to his hands. So may he who supply seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed. Uh, the seed uh, the seed that you have committed to him. Amen. 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 Yeah. It is important for us to know that 
for something to increase, it must be planted. Like I, I first mm -hmm. of all started by saying, so God will, will, he who supplies seed will cause increase in that which has been planted. Number two, God multiplies. God does not just increase, but he multiplies. He multiplies uh, the seed. One piece of corn produces hundreds <laughs> of seeds when it is mm -hmm. sown on the ground. It does not abide by itself. If, if you read Luke chapter 19, verses 12, Luke 19, 12, uh, the Bible says that a kernel of seed abide, abides by itself uh, uh, when it's not planted. But if it is thrown to the ground, it dies and germinates. And it, when it germinates, it, it, it multiplies. It multiplies. It, it, beca it doesn't abide by itself. And we can read that from the example of Jesus. Mm. Jesus went to the cross as a seed of salvation. He went to the cross as an individual. He was by himself. Mm -hmm. Then after he had uh, been uh, killed, of course, uh, uh, buried, on the third day he rises, the Bible calls him the first fruit of the, of, of, of the new creation the first fruit. So Jesus was a seed that died. He, 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 he died, he was in the grave for, for three days. And like any other seed that germinates after three days, he sprouted with a great harvest. All of us today in this forum, we are uh, uh, the results of, of what Jesus did on the cross. There are thousands and thousands of believers across the world who are, mm children of God. The Bible says that he came to his own, his own received him not, but those that received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. So we are all sons of God. How did it begin? It began from the seed of Jesus in the grave. And then he, he, he resurrects and all of us become children of God. So that is a very, very uh, uh, elaborate example of the power of a seed and Jesus as a seed uh, of salvation, and we are the fruits uh, 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 thereof. So uh, how I look at it is, um, is that way. Number three, just from, from the same uh, verse, we are saying uh, fruits, like a fruit when after a seed has germinated and uh, it gives forth to, to fruit, uh, those fruits are unlimited. We, they, are, they are not limited. I mean, they, are, they grow and they multiply exponentially. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot stop growth. We, uh, that's why we're supposed to be channels of uh, distribution of, of this seed of salvation that we have uh, received so that uh, the church can grow. The church can grow and, and, break, and, and break the boundaries any boundaries of, uh, of limitation. Um, so we need to be looking unto God because it is God that will cause the increase. I want to focus briefly uh, on this man, Abraham, and I'll be, I'll be reading a scripture from Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah 51, Isaiah says something very strong about Abraham. Isaiah 51, verses 1 and 2. Is someone getting blessed? Amen. 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 Isaiah 51, verses 1 and 2. We are discussing about the God of increase. Isaiah 51. Verses one and two. Yeah. The Bible says, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you are hewn. <laughs> look to the rock from which you are hewn. Uh, by the, when the Bible says that, imagine a huge rock and you are a piece of, of that huge rock. You have been, you are a small piece that has been cut from a huge rock and to the hole, and to the hole, 
of the pit from which you were dug. So you can imagine again that you are a hole out of a big pit that has been dug. Verses two says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you? So we are children of Abraham and Sarah, and we are children of faith. That's why the Bible is saying uh, we, are, we follow after righteousness. We are following after righteousness. So we are looking to Abraham and to Sarah, who bore us? For I called him alone. <laughs> Scripture says Abraham was called alone. When he was called, he was by himself. There were not two Abrahams. There was just one. Who was born, who, who um, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Look at verse two, very rich. He says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you? For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So the scripture says that when Abraham was called, he was by himself. He was solo. He was alone. But what happened? He was blessed. God blessed him. And number two, he increased him. So he was called alone. That is the first point we'll be dwelling on. He, Abraham was called alone by himself. Number two, he was blessed. Number three, he increased. Let us look at the first, uh, how God uh, deals with us. And we're looking at this. Uh, I'm asking a question. How does God deal with us to, to make us uh, increase? So the first portion is, um, is the one um, that the scripture says in verse 2. Look at Abraham, your father. I call him alone. When we are called, we are called alone. Alone here can, can mean that we are probably lonely. We are pro probably broke when, when we were called. We are probably very weak. The situation was, of Abraham was, was pathetic. Abraham was old. <laughs> and I want to use this illustration. When I was re reading this, uh, I want us to, this is like a plain piece of paper. So this is how God, would, God called Abraham. He was by himself, alone. He was blank. Probably he was, Abraham was broke. That was the first zero in the life of Abraham. He was broke. What else? Abraham was weak. Another zero. Abraham was childless. I'm counting his weaknesses. Another zero. Abraham was uh, what? His, his, his wife was barren. Another zero. What else? Abraham was uh, born from a pagan family. All these were disadvantages. So Abraham's life was weak, weak, weak. He didn't have anything. He was a zero man. When he was called, he was alone. God picked, uh, we'll continue with uh, that illustration. So God picks us as we are. Probably God picked you in a situation that, that, that was very pathetic, probably more pathetic than Abraham. Probably you are weak, you are, you, you, you are a nobody. You did not have a name, like Abraham was called a father of uh, uh, an exalted father, yet he was very childless. All these things were things that um, disadvantaged Abraham from being a respectable man in the society. He was not blessed. He was, we could say he was cursed, but yet God chose him. He called him alone. A zero man was called alone. God picks us the way we are. John, John chapter five, verse, seven, uh, verse seven, the, uh, John chapter five, verse seven, we find a story of this man that was uh, at the pool uh, when Jesus came to him and Jesus asked him if he wants to be well, he tells Jesus that I have no man. That was the situation of Abraham. He didn't have a man. He was by himself. He was helpless. Number two, God blessed Abraham. So God chooses us when we are weak, when we are without strength. He blesses us. 
What does blessing mean? God chooses to stand by us. God chooses to join us <laughs> in the boat. God chooses to join us in our situation. And how many of us know that if, when God is joining you in your situation, the mathematics changes. The equation changes. <laughs> it does not remain the same. Probably you started this year worried. Probably towards the end of last year, you were, you were concerned. You did not know what to expect. I have come to tell you that be joined by God. Joy, let God join you in that situation. Because God comes to add. In a situation of, of, of zeros, like Abraham had all his zeros, God stands by Abraham. God stands by Abraham. So in a situation where there were so many zeros, when God stands by you, just that one, you can see how, how that mathematics changes. You are, a, you are a zero man, but now what is that figure if you were to read it? A hundred thousand, probably one million, depending on how many zeros uh, you have. <laughs> I hope you're getting this illustration because this is how I, I was understanding it in, in the spirit. The more disadvantaged you think you are, when God joins you in that situation, your equation changes. You, you no longer become a zero man, but you become a value. You, God be, gives you value. All your zeros become valuable. <laughs> and that is my prayer for us in 2022, uh, that God will join us. So what does this mean? God added himself to Abraham's situation and he changed the mathematics. God became the reward of Abraham. May this year, 2022, may God become our reward. May God mm -hmm. become our value like he became valuable to Abraham. The book of Hebrews chapter one, verse six, the Bible says that he who comes to God may, must come believing that God is, and that he is a rewarder. And that he's a what? A rewarder of them that seek him diligently. Abraham pursued God and God rewarded him. God transformed all his zeros into values. God gave value to his nil situation and he gave him value. When God joins us, when God joins a family, that family situation changes. When God joins you in your sick condition, that sickness is blotted out. When God joins you in your workplace, that work that is becoming hopeless, that is becoming uh, valueless, God will add value when you allow him to join it. So Abraham became a blessed man. God blessed him. God's presence changes the math. The, 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 the name of God that I want to bring out here is the name uh, Sabaoth, Jehovah Sabaoth, which means the Lord of hosts. So God is, is one, <laughs> but when he shows up in the, in, the, in the situation, he brings his hosts. That's why he's called the God of the heavenly armies or the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts. He comes with all the angels to fight for you. He comes with all his heavenly hostages, hosts, to fight for you with the, the heavenly armory, with the heavenly weapons to fight for us. And that is what changes the situation. So you are not by yourself. The Bible says that greater is he that is in us. When we became Christians, we involved Jesus in our situation. So we are not by ourselves. That's why we should not fear. This year we, we should not fear because God, will change us with our situation. It is my prayer that this year will not be like last year. This year will not be like the other year because this year God has added himself in your situation. You have invited him and he has blessed you in Jesus name. 
Amen. Amen. I wish I could hear some amen. I'm preaching amen. better than you're sharing. <laughs> amen. 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 I'm getting excited and very hot right here. And I feel that, that God is stepping into boats. God is stepping into situation. God is stepping into people's health and situations are re revol revolutionizing. I hope that is some English right there. God is changing. Go God changed the name of Abraham. Abram, from a father, an exalted father, to a father of many nations. It took 25 years for God to do that because Abraham was wondering uh, how this thing, this whole thing is going to be. Abraham struggled to understand, but finally he understood and his situation was changed. May God change your situation. Mm. May God mm -hmm. step into your boat. Yes. May God step into your year and yes, may he yes. adorn your year with, mm -hmm. with blessing. And God does not just bless you. What else, what else does he do? He increases yes, you. Yes. God did not just bless Abraham. Number three, he took Abraham to the next level. That is the level of increase. Abraham was called alone. God blessed him. That means God added to, his, uh, him, to, to himself to his situation. And number three, God increased Abraham. God took Abraham from the level of Abraham to the level of Abraham, father of many nations. If Abraham was passing in the streets of Toronto and people asked Abraham, what is your name, sir? He would say, my name is Abraham. My name is Abraham. My name is Abraham. What did that mean? I'm a father of, I'm an exalted father. But when his, change, his name changed to Abraham, mm -hmm. Abraham, even before he got, he begot Isaac, he started to introduce himself differently. This year you will introduce yourself differently. Mm -hmm. This year you'll introduce yourself differently, even before mm -hmm. it happens. The way to activate increase, mm -hmm. uh, and probably in my next sermon, uh, I'll be talking about are activating increase or placing ourselves in the position of increase because it's, it is a position. So God put Abraham in a place of, of speaking out his title and his, his new status before it happened. He changed his name and he put his word in his mouth. Abraham stopped to introduce himself as an exalted father. He changed his language. He started to say, that I am a father of many nations. His certificates read differently. He started to say, I am a father of many nations. Not just many people, but many nations. Remember, God had showed him the stars of the sky. God had showed him the sand of the sea. And he had told him that if you believe me, if you come out of your father's house, I will make your descendants as many as the stars. If you can count the stars, that is how many your descendants will be. So God was creating images. God was creating imaginations. God was helping Abraham to visualize. We need to visualize ourselves successful. If you don't visualize yourself successful, you never succeed. Mm. If you never tell yourself, that's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> when the redeems, when you are redeemed, say, I am redeemed. When you are I saved, say, I am saved. Mm -hmm. Because the more you say it, the more real it becomes. So Abraham started to say, I am father of many nations. He said that for, for, for many years. It, it, was, not, it was not yet. It, I mean, it didn't happen instantly. But over time, he, he created it and he got Isaac. When he got Isaac, the story of Abraham changed because he confessed what God had made him to be. And it started in, the, in, the, in, in his mind, came to his heart, came to his mouth, and then it, it created. We can create our future by what we say. No wonder the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this year, 2022, 
we, we will increase. Mm. We will increase. God has blessed us with the blessing of increase. <laughs> Uh, and, and we will start seeing these things, but there are principles that we need to apply. The first one uh, that we'll be probably talking about is the principle of believing. The other principle that we'll talk about if we get time is the principle of visualizing, how to visuals, visualize ourselves in our mind and to get transformed by the renewal of the word of God so that we can, we can align ourselves with what God has made us to be. So God increased, God increased Abraham. He became great. Look at the testimony of Abraham. Let me read for you Genesis 24. I'm about to finish. Genesis 24. This is the testimony of the servant of Abraham. Over Abraham, uh, he testifies of what Abraham had become. Genesis 24, 34, and 35. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis 24, verses 34 and 35. The Bible says, this is how the servant of Abraham described the blessing of Abraham. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he has given him flocks and herds, mm -hmm. silver and gold, male and female servants, camels and donkeys. <laughs> and Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and to him, he has given all that he has. Now my master made me swear saying, you shall not take those. So that's a different story. But look at what he says, that Abraham had been blessed, <clears throat> had been blessed with a son, Isaac, out of Sarah. He had been blessed with camels. He had been blessed with silver and gold. He had become great. <laughs> this is what God did for Abraham, and we are the seed of Abraham. If it happened to Abraham, who is our father, the same thing will be our testimony in 2022 and beyond, in Jesus' name. It is my prayer that God will, will increase us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, let us read the testimony of the writer of Hebrews about Abraham as we come to the end. Hebrews 11, 12. We are looking at how Abraham was blessed and what the scripture says about how he was blessed and increased. Can someone read for us uh, Hebrews 11, 12? Okay, Hebrews 11, 12. Um, and so from this, this one man and he and so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants of as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand in the sea, on the seashore. Wow. Can you read it again, please? <clears throat> and so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. Wow. Wow. Look at how it starts. It says, and so from this one man, the, the man that was by himself when he was called, and look at the other description. The man was as good as dead because Abraham was old. His situation was hopeless. But what came out of him? What came out of him? He came descendants. He came, it came riches like we have read. Abraham was blessed and he was increased. Let that be our story uh, in this year, because like I've told you, God is out there to increase us. He is out there to make us great, not just uh, in wealth, but also in faith. Not just in, in, in faith, but also in, in our families, the situation around, the things that we've been asking God to intervene. I pray 
that this year our stories will, will change. Our story as a, as a church, as our story as our a community, your story as a family, your, our story as nations, our stories as individuals will change because we serve the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God who was the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac is our God. His address is the same. <laughs> the address of God is, is the same. He has not changed his name. He is the same powerful God. May God bless us tonight, even as we uh, continue laying the foundation for this year. And may this year be different. May our stories uh, move from one glory to the other. May our faith increase and let us commit our life to God. Let us invite God in our situation and let our situations change for the better. Have a great night. Have a great week. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Uh, I look forward to, to, to meeting us in, in person. Remember, our, our, uh, the church is open. We, we are meeting. And those of us that started with us, I, I say that we have started a very good series in church, a series that we, we, we are calling uh, Believing God in the Difficult Times. And we are teaching how, to, how we can navigate in these difficult times, how we can believe God and still be successful and still uh, have undeniable proofs that he mm -hmm. is indeed with us in a, in a society that is crumbling. So I look forward to, to seeing all of you. I look forward to uh, working with all of you uh, so that we can, we can be well prepared to face this life and, uh, and go to heaven someday when, yes. when Jesus comes uh, for us. That is why we are here and that is, that is our goal. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen, 